In a simple circuit in aplesia, there are sensory neurons, motor neurons, and interneurons. When a touch stimulation is applied on the siphon, an action potential is sent through the sensory neuron, which synapses onto the interneuron and the motor neuron. Let's take a closer look at what happens between the sensory neuron and the motor neuron. The depolarization from a touch stimulus opens voltage-gated calcium channels allowing an influx of calcium ions into the cell. These ions bind to calmodulin, which in turn activates adenylyl cyclase, which then turns ATP into cyclic AMP. Few neurotransmitters are then released. Now let's see what happens when a ball is dropped on its tail, producing a pain signal that sends a shock signal from the facilitating interneuron to the sensory neuron. An action potential from the facilitating interneuron triggers the release of serotonin onto the sensory neuron. The serotonin then binds to G-protein coupled receptors. The alpha subunit then triggers the already activated adenylyl cyclase from calmodulin, converting even more ATP to cyclic AMP. The cyclic AMP then activates protein kinase A, which phosphorylates the potassium channels, decreasing its conductance. This depolarization then causes voltage-gated calcium channels to open for a longer period of time, allowing more neurotransmitters to be released. This is associative learning, when the sensory neuron is paired with the facilitating interneuron's effects.